Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to merge data! And so we are finally at our step of merging data. <clears throat> to recap, we have downloaded our SVI data set from Blackboard. We recognized that it was not in the right unit of measurement, and so we aggregated it up to counties. We then sorted our data files to make sure that they were uh, ordered in the same direction. And then we discovered to our dismay that we did not have a matchable identity identifier in our two files and so we have now created our identical identifier our combined FIPS variable and so we arrive at the finale being the merging of the data file and so we now have our data file which we want to merge and we do so by going to data merge files and add variables our data file we would like to merge on is already open so we will simply highlight it and we will press continue. If it's not open, you would simply want to select the external feature and then go find it, whichever folder it is in. But again, it is open for us, so we're gonna highlight it and press continue. And when we open it, what we'll see here is that we now have a variable over here in our excluded variables box. And the reason it's excluded is SPSS is going, hey buddy, this variable already exists over here. Why would you want to add it? And in fact, we do not want to add this variable, but instead we want to use it in order to merge our two data files. And so I'm going to simply check that I've got my key variable that I would like to match on and that the, the cases are sorted already in both of the data sets. And so then I'm going to select it to move over and you'll see that as I've moved it over, we did not get our warning. And again, the reason we did not get our warning is that both data sets have this combined FIPS variable and in both data sets, the combined FIPS variable is a string variable and has a width of five. And so now, I'm ready to merge my data file. I can do this by pressing OK and it will go ahead and merge my data files or I can press paste and it will generate the syntax. I'm going to go ahead and press paste just so we can see which one uh, or what the syntax looks like. So this is a warning that pops up. This is SPSS saying, hey, if your data is not sorted correctly, this is not going to work. We have already run our sort, so we anticipate this is going to work for us. We may need to revisit this, but at this point, our fingers are crossed. So we're going to click OK here, and you'll see that it's disappeared. Nothing has actually happened because all SPSS did was create a uh, syntax, which it plopped over here. And so you'll see our syntax code again. This is a relatively straightforward code because our data happened to be clean enough after we had gone through all of those steps we've previously gone through to get it clean. And so you'll see that it's easy enough here. And if, all, if I wanted to merge it using my syntax file, I could highlight these four rows and then run that code. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to run the code using my point and click feature just so that we can see this taken from start to finish. So again, to do this in SPSS, we would go to, to merge these data files in SPSS, we would go to data, merge files, add variables. We want to add variables from the US presidential database, which is already open, select it and press continued. The variable that is shared across these data sets is the combined underscore FIPS variable. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to indicate that it is the key variable and that we have sorted both data files according to this variable. And I'm going to move it over here to the key variables. This is the variable that we're going to match on. I'm going to press OK and we're going to see what happens. I'm getting my warning again, which is just to say make sure it's ordered correctly. I'm pressing OK. And I believe we have had success. And the reason I believe we have had success is that here is our SVI data set. And here is our presidential election data set. You'll notice these 11 variables, order, votes, dem, votes, GOP, total votes, blah, 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 blah. Those are the exact variables that now appear here. And we can switch over to data view and we can go ahead and scroll over a bit further and see if actual data shows up and lo and behold actual data looks like it is showing up. We've got our dem votes, our GOP votes, our total votes. Um, we've got percent dem, percent GOP. Uh, we've got the difference amount here, uh, point difference, and then we've got our county name. And again, the, uh, if we recall way back when, this county name is useful for us simply because we can use this to check against the county name that appeared in the SVI. So for row one, we'll see that this first county is uh, 
Otago, Otago County, Alabama. And so if I scroll all the way back over here, I'll see Otago is the name of the county. And so uh, while that is only one example, uh, we can look through here. We've got Colbert County or Colbert County, depending upon how you're feeling. Uh, and so we can scroll back over and we can see, does that align with Colbert County? Yes, it does. And so our data looks as if it has merged uh, successfully and that we have brought in our presidential data. And so why did we go through this process to bring in presidential data? Well, it might be that a researcher is interested in understanding what is the association between the social vulnerability ranking or rating of a county and the number of votes or the relative percentage of votes that went GOP or that went Democrat in the previous election. This could point to differences that might be associated um, or that might help understand why particular counties went the way they did, why particular places in the U.S. may have voted the way they voted, and might help shed light on some of the decisions that people were making. Uh, I will not run these analyses now, but rather uh, put this as something we might return to uh, for the duration of the class. But for now, what I want to do is I want to save my newly merged data set. And so to do that, and again, I'm just scrolling through here to look at things and just take note of all of the beautiful numbers we brought together, um, including our wonderful uh, uh, election data here on the end. And so I want to go and save this. And I'm not going to overwrite my master file, mainly because I've changed it and I don't want to overwrite it. So I want to create a new file. And to create a new file, what I want to do is go File, Save As. And now I get a pop-up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this I'm going to call this SBI and election data since we brought in the election data. And now I'm going to create a new master, which is a new master file of the SVI and election data. And then I'm going to simply press enter and SPSS will save it. Uh, it's already done. It was very quickly there. And if I want to check to confirm that that has taken place, I can go back to my SPSS example folder, which is where everything is being put. And I see my new file, SVI and election data master. And now I have my new data set that I can get in and analyze. And again, look and see if there are associations between particular characteristics of uh, a county and the way the county voted in the last presidential election. And so we have arrived at the finale of our journey of data merging, where we are merging data files that have the same cases but different variables. And again, for the example that we just completed, we merged files that had the same data in terms of uh, each file contained county information, and we merged together new variables. One of the data files contained the social vulnerability index variables, and the other data file contained election data outcomes from the 2016 presidential election. Whew, quite the journey but one well worth taking and something that could be useful if you find yourself working with data from multiple countries uh, and uh, pulling data from multiple sources so that you're not having to go through and manually enter the data, but rather are merging and allow uh, merging using SPSS and allowing the statistical software to do the checks to make sure that there aren't manual data entry areas or en entry errors errors or other things that could disrupt the legitimacy and validity of findings because of errors introduced in the generation of data files. Whew, quite the journey, but one well worth taking.